Tell us about this photograph. Okay, well, in the this is Rafa. Rafa was one of the the head cheeses in the what they call the cartel. Um, uh, he was the equivalent to Pablo Escobar, but not as crazy as Pablo. That's me. This is uh, Rafa's girlfriend, even though Rafa was married. And this is a bodyguard, and that's Max, the guy who ended up snitching us all out. And we're in New Orleans. And these are all toys, and all these pieces of clothing we're wearing here, they actually, you just kind of stick your arms through, and they pull them in the back, because you can't see the back. Right. You just slip into it. And they take a picture of you. Well, this picture was hanging in Max's house, and they went and seized everything out of Max's house when they arrested him. And they tried to use this in a court case to show the guns, because you can't see it here, but he's carrying, he's got a Tommy gun, you know, mm -hmm. with a drum on it. And this is, I don't know what the hell kind of gun it is. And she's got an old revolver trying to say, and some defense attorney, he saw the thing and he went and had five kids at the same studio wearing the same way too big clothes, posed in the same position with the same toy guns. Because the government tried to say there was violence on somebody who wanted to get bonded out because it was, I think it was her. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh yeah, this big, you know, and it showed, you know, we're talking about kids this big, wearing <laughs> all this, the same clothes, where, you know, everything's so big. And it was one of, you go to New Orleans on Bourbon Street and you get these kind of things right. made. The, the, the story, the backstory, this is Max, this guy and Rafa went to Mexico. They wanted to set a thing up in Mexico to bring, fly it into Mexico and then transport it out of Mexico. And I told them that what they wanted to do was crazy. If you wanted to do this, I'll show you how to do it. And you don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody what you're doing. They went down there, they did the usual thing. <laughs> and they got arrested by the cops, robbed, kidnapped. They let her go to come back and give, to get more money. Um, she came, I, and I was conveniently one day late. I wasn't there with them. I was in Texas, and she came to the hotel I was at, and I had to cross the border, go into Mexico, because I didn't want to use the phone, and there, and I called uh, two Mexicans that I know, that, do you know how to solve this problem, and they said, uh, and I told them where it was, he said they would take care of it, I asked them what it would, what's it going to cost, they said um, nothing, because they owed me. I said, well, okay. Um, he said, I said, really, what's it going to cost? He says, nothing. We will take care of this. They shouldn't be doing this anyway. And they were released magically. And nobody got hurt. And I met them at the hotel in Mexico, I'm, I'm sorry, in Texas. And we went, it was really funny, as Rafa was probably worth, I don't know, $100 million at that time. And he had to borrow $10,000 from me. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I don't know if your credit's any good. He goes, but um, the problem with Rafa is he was high most of the time. He used to one of those people that he could he had a bodyguard with him. He could say shoot him, and he would he wouldn't even question it. You were dead. But when he shot, he didn't didn't shoot you to be shooting you. He shot you to kill you. <laughs>